Aboard the aircraft carrier Kearsarge, prime recovery ship, the excitement is electric. A notable mission beginning for Helicopter 51. It will carry out the assignment of dropping frogmen into the Pacific some four miles off the bow of the Kearsarge, where astronaut Gordon Cooper will come down in his capsule after his 34-hour ride through space. There, in the center of the screen, you can now see the Fate 7 capsule dangling gently from the 63-foot parachute. Solid and intact after the scorching re-entry, during which Cooper proved his mastery over the machine by bringing it back with a flawless job of manual guidance. He hits the bullseye inside the pre-planned ballpark, the finest job of marksmanship in the history of manned spaceflight. The chopper carries out its assignment, the climactic moment of the big recovery operation for which the men of the Kearsarge had been trained. Frogmen are dropped into the five-foot waves to fasten a flotation collar to the capsule. A whale boat from the Kearsarge will attach a cable and tow it alongside the carrier, which has sped to the impact site. Cooper later describes the wrap of a helicopter's frogman on his capsule door as like a handshake from home. And here, as the capsule is lifted onto the hangar deck, is the historic scene which will be remembered for all time by the men of the Kearsarge. Safely aboard. And now Cooper blows off the hatch. Here he is, 22 orbits, 34 hours, 600,000 miles, safe and sound now, experiencing dizziness for about 15 seconds. The explanation is simple. Weightlessness is somewhat similar to lying quietly in bed. It causes a pooling of blood in feet and legs and a lessening of blood supply to the brain. Cooper lost seven pounds. He is dehydrated and quickly drinks four glasses of pineapple juice. Cooper says he found the weightlessness quite enjoyable. A typical remark from this man who has been called by his friends a human computer. A two-hour medical examination discloses nothing more than the temporary weight loss. The Air Force Major enjoys Navy chow while the Kearsarge plows along at 25 knots toward Hawaii. The 50th state has a big welcome prepared for an adopted son. Cooper met and married his wife Trudy while they were students at the University of Hawaii. Mrs. Cooper and teenage daughters Kamala and Janita now personally greet their own very special hero as he leaves the helicopter which flew him in from the Kearsarge just offshore. Leaving Hickam Air Force Base, the Coopers receive a tumultuous reception in Honolulu, which is only the beginning of a hectic and hasty period of travels and public acclaim. Ahead is the tribute in Washington, the ticker tape reception in New York. But first the Coopers will happily return to the place the astronauts call their home away from home. And so, from Honolulu to Patrick Air Force Base in Florida, a jetliner bringing them in an hour earlier than scheduled. But the well-wishers also got there early, and here begins the reception perhaps closest to the heart of astronaut Cooper. The route from the air base to Cocoa Beach is no Broadway or Pennsylvania Avenue. Yet along this seven-mile drive near Cape Canaveral, there is all the warmth, the pride, the grateful acknowledgement of a nation for one who carried the stars and stripes on a cosmic voyage without precedent in the nation's probes of outer space. Astronaut Cooper meets the press in an auditorium packed with newsmen from around the world who had watched him blast off four days earlier. He is to tell orbit by orbit how he performed his various experiments, how he glided his spacecraft manually back to Earth. He is asked whether he was impressed with his mission. Was he concerned with his personal safety? Well, I've waited quite a long while for this flight, and I was very impressed with it. I think anybody that goes up on a space flight and says they aren't impressed, there must be something wrong with them. But uh, I was not overly concerned for my safety. I had every confidence that I could get it back fine. Uh, the thing was routine only in that 
that we had checked, checked, and double-checked, and all our engineers and uh, all the McDonald people had done a real great job on this capsule, and it was in good shape, and all the systems worked beautifully, and it made it rather a routine flight. It was, it was routine in that respect that it worked just like advertised. The Cooper story is the American story. A man and his family accepting success with prayerful thanks, dedicating this shining hour to all who worked for his safe return.